Hello. Hello. Thanks. <laughs> Let's start. Yeah, thanks for, for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about GLTF asset creation in Blender and not only in Blender. But first, uh, just a few words about me. And my name is Julien Durour. Uh, I have multiple hats. Uh, I'm a pipeline TD for Airbus Defense and Space. Um, I'm also a rigor artist. Uh, I work, for example, for Dilili à Paris with L'Effet Special Studio, uh, a film from uh, Michel Oslo, and uh, for the Dordoin uh, game um, trailer, for example. And I'm also the developer of the GLTF importer-exporter in Blender um, for Kronos Group. Just a few words about GLTF. I, I don't know how many people here are already using GLTF. Wow. <laughs> okay, so for people that don't know it already, GLTF is a royalty uh, file format for uh, efficient transmission and uh, 3D send loadings. And GLTF uh, is not an authoring format like you can find, for example, for USD, MaterialX, FX, and so on. It's definitely file format for the last mile uh, to be able to uh, efficiently display 3D. So we are in a mix of authoring tool, authoring format, viewer on engine, and of course there is a lot of GLTF tools uh, in the ecosystem. And now uh, GLTF file format is now an ISO standard. For you, GLTF should be as simple as clicking on GLTF exports, but unfortunately it's not so easy <laughs> because, you know, Blender is not a GLTF uh, editor, so some, it can have some uh, incompatibility between Blender, how Blender manages uh, manage data and how GLTF manages it. But uh, today I'm, we are in the classroom, so I'm not going to display lots of slides. I'm going to demoing uh, some features of the GLTF import-export uh, inside Blender. And uh, I'm going to talk about some external useful tools that you can use, tools and resources. And then uh, I'm going to uh, show you some of the current developments in the Blender importer exporter that will be available for 4.0 that should be released in a week and a half and for later uh, release. And uh, I will keep time for questions if you have some specific questions. So let's start directly inside Blender. Um, of course, um, there is a lot of things that can be imported, exported uh, in GLTF files, and that's not a secret. We can manage some 3D data. Uh, sorry, I'm going to close that. Um, so the first thing that I want to show you is that it's not only 3D data that we can export, but uh, inside GLTF file you can export uh, shape keys too. And uh, not only baked shape keys, but uh, you, you can have some shape key definition. So if I create some basic shape keys, for example, like this, okay will be some very basic keys for one and for, sorry, this one. Okay, okay let's start with that. And uh, when you export into a GLTF file, you will be able um, to export these shape keys and uh, something that sometimes is not known that uh, you can 
sets the default value of uh, your shape keys, and it's something that will be exported uh, in the GLTF file too. For example, if I export this simple test cases, and I want to display it in an online viewer, for example, this one, it's a viewer based on 3GS, and you import it, you will be able to get uh, the shape keys here, and as you can see, the uh, value of the shape keys, the default value of the shape keys that you import, you exported, uh, is uh, inside the GLTF file. So it's something that you can use and works quite well. Uh, there is sometimes some limitation uh, inside Blender that I didn't manage yet. For example, if you restrict the shape keys by some vertex group, currently it's not yet taken into account, but uh, it should be able uh, to, to, to manage it uh, in a future release. And uh, of course, um, you, we are able to uh, manage, for example, the mod modifier. modifier. Oh, it's, sorry, it's uh, yep, for example, if I get a, an array modifier, and when you export, you are able here to apply the modifier before you export so it will get all the value and export this data. Okay, there is currently a limitation in Blender. When you apply the modifier, you are not able to export the shape key in the same time. It's a, a, an API limitation in, in Blender, so currently there is no way to uh, export both shape keys and, um, and modifiers. So, about 3D, it's quite straightforward. Something that you can be useful for people working with um, point cloud, for example. Um, Inside GLTF, you can export uh, loose edges and loose points. Uh, so for exporting um, point cloud, it can be useful. By default, it, it won't be exported, but you can activate it here, loose point and loose edges, to be able to export 3D data that have no faces. The most um, Maybe the most difficult part to export, there is two difficulties to export. It's the materials and the animation. And first, I'm going to talk maybe uh, the, uh, about the materials. Um, GLTF um, use a PBR uh, model definition. So fortunately, we are able to manage it quite uh, straightforward using uh, the principal BSDF uh, nodes. So what you can see here is a new principal BSDF. Maybe you don't recognize it because it's the new principal BSDF that will be included in 4.0 version. And um, you can see that there is some panels here that you can expand uh, or um, close. And uh, maybe we are currently are not able to manage all these inputs uh, uh, inside the principal BSDF, but most of them are uh, managed. Um, maybe something that if you want to work with materials uh, in Blender, so you have the documentation that lists all the stuff that are cu currently uh, managed, but uh, you can also uh, use um, a website where you have lots of sample models. It will be list listed in, in, in a slide later. And uh, you can have lots of 
here sample GLTF file with all the um, features that are supported in GLTF file. So uh, something that you can do is to check if there is something particularly that you want to import to export. You can check if you have some example files that uh, did it. Um, and you can, for example, import it. So if I import this model, for example, okay, it's the same. That's what I show you just before, but this time with the materials. And let's get a great Android button app. So when you import GLTF file, you will be able to show all the stuff that are created uh, in the shader graph. So of course, GLTF files are able to manage some uh, base color map. So um, you only have to plug a base color map here in the base color of the principal BSDF. But um, if there is no map, um, only the color will be exported. You, uh, GLTF uh, for file formats manage both uh, texture map and uh, color factor. So if you want to uh, use this factor, you can um, use, no, it's not a mix, it's a multiply. You can use this multiply nodes to be able to um, manage both a texture and a particular um, factor here. Any of the textures that are um, used in say, Blender can also have mapping nodes and an UV map. This is something that can be uh, exported from Blender to GLTF file for all the, all the maps. So um, the PBR uh, material inside GLTF using uh, metallic roughness um, uh, definition that it's quite forward uh, inside Blender because it's something that is supported by the principal BSDF file, uh, principal BSDF node. So you can use metallic and roughness here. And um, you can have a single texture that will be used for all this um, metallic and roughness uh, value because uh, we map the green to uh, roughness and the blue to metallic. So if there is no map, of course, you can set a single value uh, for uh, your, your assets. Yes, it, it's in the standard of the GLTF file, yeah. Okay. I mean, this image was prepared in three channels, but it wasn't prepared in the export. So if I had two grayscale maps and uh, make the export from Blender, is then one image generated? Or? Yes, only one image you will generate it during the export. We will, will map all the channel of your images into in a single texture at exports. Okay. We merge your three maps into a single one. Okay, so, so during export, my images are not really, mm, they not stay the same. No. They are also um, converged in something, and at import, you see the, the result. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Dur during the report, if you have multiple, yeah. If you are not editing a GLTF file. It, it was a, the question was, maybe I can repeat the question. The question was, if I don't have a single map for metallic and rootness, but I have two different um, uh, maps here, uh, what's happened? So the answer is, if you are doing something like that, during the export, uh, we will merge the channels uh, of uh, 
of the metallic fruitness. So for example, in this particular case, for the metallic, we, we will create a single texture during export. So uh, we will create a new texture that is not in the image list of Blender for now. And uh, this new texture will keep the blue, blue value uh, of these uh, images, will keep uh, the green value of these images, if it's another images, because you plug a color here directly in roughness value. So currently it's not supported, but in the in the suite of six version, but uh, it will be. I don't remember. It's it's a four dot o or four dot one, um, because it's a roughness. Now the exporter will be able to see that it's a roughness. So we are going to not take the three color RGB here, but we are talking about the green because it's roughness. Yes? No, procedural texture are not part of the GLTF specification, so we are not able to export it. There is no automatic bake. You have to bake your texture before and then create this map. And um, there is already some bake capabilities inside Blender or some add-ons are doing it. So I didn't manage. Um, I, I, I choose to not, man to not bake during uh, the export and only manage this uh, texture already done. Yes. No, currently we don't have the capabilities to choose the resolution during export. It will choose the resolution of your texture for now. Um, but um, I will show you after some external tools that can perform this task uh, in the post-processing Yes. One more question. So is that always a PNG export to keep the channel separate? Because I've noticed sometimes with a JPEG three channel full with cross contamination. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the question was about PNG or JPEG export because during the JPEG compression, uh, you know, there is some mix between the color channels. So um, during the export, you have multiple um, options for the material and uh, about the images, you are able to choose how you want to export it. Automatic, we keep the texture you choose as there. So JPEG will st stay JPEG, PNG will stay PNG, etc., etc. But you can also decide to um, say, okay, I want to export all in JPEG format or it's a new feature in Phototo. You will be able to export uh, with uh, WebP format. And of course, you can have an uh, alpha. If you are using PNG, you can plug the, the alpha here if you have some uh, transparency in your, in your map. Um, you can choose the IRR that you want to export. And uh, of course, you can have a normal map. Um, same way you can choose, uh, sorry, you can have a, you can choose your UV map for, for, the, um, for the normal map. You can change the strength if you want. It's exported in the GLTF file too. Uh, subsurfaces is not yet uh, available in GLTF specification. There is in progress work to be able to have an extension to export subsurface, but it's not done yet. Um, specular data are now exported. Yes? Uh, if I understand correctly, even if you have like an image-based load map for export, it won't export? No, it won't export, yeah. Um, about the specular, uh, we are now able to export specular. Um, quite straightforward. It was not the case. It's, it is not the case in the current uh, stable release because um, 
there is no uh, specular taint. Uh, that was uh, that is the color here in the 3.5, 3.6 version. Uh, it's not uh, it's not available in the old principal BSDF, so you are not able to to manage it. Anisotropic is not yet exported or imported. Uh, I'm on it. It should be able uh, in uh, 4.1 version. You can choose the transmission if you want. It will be exported. Same for codes. Uh, we were able to uh, to manage codes. Um, the code weight, the code roughness, and the Content is not yet in the specification. You are now able to manage the Sheen version. Uh, if I, for example, import another file, when you have a Sheen, um, simple Sheen closes, for example. You have Shin here that can be exported the, the Shin value or Shin rootness and uh, Shin color. And same for emission, the file that I had just before had the color and the color map for that. So as uh, as you can see, most of the principal BSDF uh, value can be exported and imported. Yes. Um, yes, you can change the strength of the emission. You can plug a, a color here and you can plug a strength, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And something that is not supported by the principal BSDF here is the occlusion map, because in Cycle or AV there is no occlusion map. They are uh, automatically um, calculated during the rendering. So to manage uh, the occlusion map, we manage it by creating um, an additional nodes where you can plug a texture that will be your occlusion map. It's uh, plugged in the uh, red color. Uh, so here we have uh, an additional uh, texture for the, for the occlusion, but if you want, because the um, metallic and roughness are using the green and the blue, there is still the red channel to be available for the occlusion. So we are able to manage uh, the occlusion this way by uh, creating these nodes. So you have to enable it in the GLTF add-on because the importer is an add-on in Blender, even if it's uh, enabled by default. And you can enable here the shader editor add-ons, and that way you will have in the output here, you will have the GLTF material outputs that will create automatically these nodes. And there is one feature that is not um, uh, managed by principal BSDF, but you, you can import and export its volume feature. Uh, so um, you will be able to manage it with another node, the volume uh, attenuation nodes. So, for example, um, we try to, don't remember one file that will manage attenuation volume. Yeah, this way, you, you can have a volume absorption nodes here when you can set the color and the density and there is one additional uh, feature that is not available in the volume absorption is the thickness uh, of the mesh. It's something that we, we can add to uh, this uh, output nodes using the thickness sockets here. So most of this uh, shader graph uh, works when you import and export, but uh, there is 
of course, some nodes that can be recognized. For example, if you put a, a ramp map, it's not something that part of the GLTF specification, so it won't be recognized uh, during the export. So let's talk um, about animation, except if someone has a question about uh, the shaders. No, OK, don't hesitate to, to ask a question. Don't wait the end of the presentation. So about animation, um, and just before animation, GLTF files are able to manage skinning and rigging. So, for example, um, we'll be able to manage to import these models that is animated, and it's also, as you can see here, uh, there is some rigging and skinning. So, we are able to to import it and to export it, and it will export uh, all your bones or. If you want, you can export all, all, only uh, your uh, deformation bones, and um, it will export uh, your uh, skinning too. So if uh, you, sorry, if you um, change the skinning, for example, it's something that can be imported and exported uh, without uh, any any problem. And uh, as you can see here, we can um, uh, import and export animation, and, but uh, there are some limitations. We are able to import and export, of course, objects, animation, location, rotation, scale, and uh, same for arm armatures. Um, but um, the current uh, way uh, Blender manage animation is not exactly uh, the same uh, in GLTF file um, because uh, any action is linked to only one object, but uh, in GLTF file um, you can have an animation that is linked to multiple objects. So if you uh, attempt the Seabrain uh, talk yesterday about the next uh, animation uh, 2025 projects. Uh, it's something that will change because uh, we are we will be able to uh, export some animation that is linked to multiple objects. So uh, it's something that uh, will be easier to to manage uh, during import and exports. So if I get some um, simple uh, tests for uh, animation, for example. Um, how we manage uh, animation when we export and export is something that is not well known and quite difficult to, to understand uh, because we found a way to be able to um, export uh, animation and to merge animation from multiple uh, different objects into a single GLTF animation. For that, we are using the NLA editor. So, uh, for example, Currently, we have two different animations uh, inside um, for this armature. Uh, a robot dance here and a robot death. Okay, so let's create some. Um, I, I want to change the shape keys uh, of this, uh, the, the, the head for this animation. So, for example, I will create a really simple uh, animation that's changed and shape case here. And if I export this file, you will be able to see that it exports the animation without any problem, but it exports three different animation one for the dance, one for the death, and the third one for the shape key animation. But it's maybe not something that I want because maybe I want to export uh, only one animation for the death plus uh, the shape keys. So it's something that we can done. 
can be done. So I will create uh, here another, um, for example, for the for the dance. I will decide to create yeah, maybe another animation here. And if you want to merge animation from different objects, you are able to do it using the same name for the NLA track. So for example, for this one, I decided to have the same name for the RoboDance and the RoboDance. And if I'm doing that, when you export, it will export only two animation and as you can see this animation plays both the um, armature animation and the shape key animation and same for the other one it's a little bit maybe we can okay you can see that the shape key change here so it's a it's a trick <laughs> because there is no the same data model in blender on gltf file but it works and somewhere during the 4.x cycle um, a new animation system will, will come in, in Blender where, in, where we, we will be able to manage different tracks uh, from different objects into the same animation so it will be more or less the same that in GLTF file so we will be able to avoid this trick. Um, another feature that is not well known um, is uh, about using uh, material variants. Uh, for example, um, here we have a preview here, for example. Uh, we have a, a shoe here with two different materials. Um, and we are able to change the material here for this part of the shoe. And maybe we want to change this value too, but um, it's something that we can perform in GLTF file. And um, if you activate it in the preferences, you will be able to manage material variants. So, little demonstration about this. Um, we can decide, for example, to have this version when we are using blue color, for example, like this. And I can decide that it's uh, my first variant. And I can assign all this material into this variant. And I can decide to create another variant, variant two, when I change the color of the shoe and this color too, for example, red. And I can assign it to variants and I can create a, a new variant here with, for example, this one for black. Black. Yeah, for example, and I can assign two variants. And I can decide in the GLTF file that I maybe want have the default um, assets this way, for example, and I can decide to assign this material to um, default value. And so now if you switch here, you are able to see your different variants. It automatically will change all the materials, all the slot of your materials. And when you export that, as you can see, for example, in this, you are able to see the default values that I set for the materials. 
And if I go, for example, with another online viewer, the Babylon GS1, you can see the default value too, but here you can see that we exported the variants too, and you are able to manage it from the GLTF file. And it's quite useful for customization of objects, for example, for online uh, shops or something like that. For pipelines, we are able to manage some custom data inside Blender. So if you want to export some custom data, you can use um, custom properties here when you can decide, okay, I want property beacon with value three, for example, and during exports, you can decide um, to include the custom properties here and if it will uh, export your data as uh, extra fields inside your GLTF file. So that's something that can be used and we are able to manage custom attributes too um, for your data. So for example, uh, I can create some, yeah, for example, color attributes um, using here. I'm going to close that. And um, some uh, custom attributes can be created and it's part of the GLTF specification. Uh, there are some limitations because not all the um, types that are av available in the, the, um, the attributes are managed um, inside the, the GLTF. For example, you, you can't have some string uh, attributes inside GLTF. Yes? Um, no, not not all uh, custom properties can be animated, but um, that's something that can be changed. So for extra fields, you can do whatever you want in the GLTF file. So yeah, in theory, yes, you can animate these fields and linked to animation this is this particular extra field uh, with the animation, but it's not part of the exporter yet, but uh, it should be in the 4.1 version. And um, about attributes, for example, I'm going to, to sorry, to create some attributes. And this, um, inside GLTF, uh, I, I didn't, find a, a great way to perform that uh, yet um, because as, as you can see there is a lot of uh, attributes here that are automatically created by Blender for example the position the selection even if it, uh, they are not display uh, you can find it uh, in inside the, the Blender data so for any uh, custom attributes inside um, GLTF they are starting with an underscore. So for, for now, uh, only the attributes, the custom attributes starting with an underscore will be exported. So if I create, for example, these tests and uh, trying to export, um, you can say, okay, I want to uh, export um, custom attributes here. And you will be able to see that these attributes are managed here and it's a link to uh, Anastasia or to, to some part of the binary file of the GLTF with all the data for all your vertex of your file. So, I talked about shader, about animation. Um, there is something that is sometimes not known is that you are able to 
another way to be able to manage both ship keys and uh, armature animation is currently we are able to manage any shape keys drivers that are drive by a bone from your armature. So little demonstration, for example, I'm in the uh, robot dance, um, I'm going to, for example, create a, a new bone here. It's bone one, okay. And here, inside here, you can create um, a new driver. Uh, any uh, deformation uh, shape case, corrective shape case that is driven by um, the armature will be um, managed. So, for example, if I decide to create um, here a driver that will change the shape keys when I move this bone, uh, if I animate this bone, when I exported, even if I didn't do the trick about the NLA trick name, when I export it, the exporter will automatically uh, check if there is some driver uh, that are driven by a bone of uh, your armature, and it will export um, both the um, animation of the shape key and the armature in the same animation. As you can see, there is an automatic recognition of the driver. So it's quite useful for any character that can be exported. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Don't remember. <laughs> I have to check. Maybe, maybe we can check. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Didn't. Don't remember. So maybe we can say, okay, this bone is not a deformation bone anymore. And during the exports, um, I want to export only deformation bones. So export it. Oh, it's crash. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A live session is not a good live session if there is no crash. So yeah, okay. I will manage it, fix it, hopefully before the release. <laughs> Any other question? No, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of feature. And it's quite be quite boring to go inside all the stuff here. So I can't, I can't, I don't have any time. Yeah. No, that's not part of the specification. So we can't take change the visibility of the objects. Okay, some people are using some trick to put the scale to zero or something like that, but yeah. Now, currently in the specification, um, only a rotation, translation, scale can be animated for and shape keys. Uh, but there is an extension that should be ratified soon <laughs> when where you will be able to animate for example a uh, texture transform map or any factors uh, for example to animate the opacity or something like that and um, this okay don't do that at home i will switch my branch during the <laughs> during the demonstration because I'm working on it. So this, okay, it will wake up, please. It's on my external drive, so it's not a SSD. 
Come on. Yeah. So this extension is named animation pointer. And with this extension, of course, it will crash, I know. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, it's currently in development. It's not in the main branch yet. Um, pointer, okay. You are with this extension. Oh, no crash. Uh, you will be able to um, manage animation on other parts of the shader graph. For example, the um, texture transform here. We are able to manage the opacities, the volume extension, the change of higher air. It's, okay. It, it's not part of Blender yet. It's currently in development. But uh, as you can see, for example, here, it will be able to manage some animation here on the mapping nodes and uh, on metallic rockness, uh, higher air, and volumes should be of animation, yeah. yeah. But um, okay, this field should be animate, will be animatable uh, when the, the extension will be released, but it's not yet done. I don't remember exactly what field you want to animate, but uh, uh, visibility. visibility, yeah. So y y you maybe we be able to manage it with uh, the alpha value, the alpha value because here you can change uh, yeah, the visibility with uh, the alpha value in the, inside the GLTF file. So I'm running out of time, so maybe I can talk a little bit about uh, uh, external tools that can be uh, man useful. The sample models uh, where you can find lots of GLTF files to be able to see how Blender uh, import it. And um, so you, you can replicate it on your own models. There is an online GLTF validator. So you only have to uh, drag and drop your GLTF file inside this validator. And uh, if there is something inside the file that is not uh, aligned with the specification, it will say it. And there is, for example, and some other tools I, 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 you can already have seen that I, I use this two online viewer, for example. And um, there are some post-processing tools uh, that you can use, for example, to change the resolution of your texture and to transform a binary GLTF file into a separate uh, file, something like that. You, you can do what whatever you want or compress the texture online. And there is another project that is quite useful. Uh, you can retrieve il here all the sample uh, models uh, of the website, but you can drag and drop your own models. And this website is quite useful because you are able to um, check uh, any extension. Uh, you can see all the animation, so there is no animation here, but you can change um, any data and you can debug your uh, exported file. For example, if you want to see the texture coordinate map or only the normal map and uh, the geometric tangent, if there is some, uh, the occlusion, uh, you, you, you can see directly on your model only the, the maps that you want. So this uh, website can be quite useful. And of course, the M page for the GLTF Blender IO, that is where uh, you can report bugs. Uh, you can report bugs on project uh, on Blender, developer.blender.org if you want to. Anyway, I will check all the, the bugs from both sites and you can request new feature. 
So this is the home page for the project, but any change on this project will, will be automatically replicated inside Blender the, the day after, so don't worry about that. What's new? Really, really fast because I'm running out of time. Uh, for the 4.0 version, you will be able to manage WebP texture. We will be able to manage uh, GPU instancing extension. Uh, we change the way we import rigging data to have a better rigging import export round trip for people that want to edit a GLT file inside Blender without any modification on the rigging parts. And uh, you are now able to change the number of bones that you want for influence your skin data, because before it was for influences or all influences, and now we are able to manage it more precisely. It was requested by Godot's game engine that manage eight, if I remember correctly, because the Godot's game engine using this add-on exporter when you drag and drop any blend file into your game engine project. It won't open Blender and get the data. It will open Blender and use my add-on e exports to get the GLTF data. And you are going to manage sparse accessor for shape keys um, to reduce the file size. Um, and of course, I already told about that we are a better use of principal nodes because they change a lot of things that are more aligned with the GLTF specification. And there is a lot of other stuff that will come in 4.1 or later when Ratify, for example, the animation pointer that I just show you. And for example, the anisotropy extension, um, I'm working on animation export uh, performance. Uh, you are also able in 4.1 to remove the armature objects um, because it's something that not exists in any other software because other software on GLTF are using joints, but there is no armature objects that are uh, containing all the bones. So uh, when possible, now at export, we will be able to remove these objects and lot of any other features that will be added. You know, it's in active development, so there is lots of lots of features that are uh, added. If you have any question, uh, I also have to mention that we have a GLTF user group meeting starting in uh, half an hour. Um, it's upstairs, so don't hesitate to come. You will be able to ask any question that you want. Um, we will have a little slide to recap where the GLTF uh, where and go. <laughs> and um, so don't hesitate to, to come uh, and say hi and ask questions if you want. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot.